Yo, 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 what is up, ladies and gentlemen? It is your boy, the franchise player, Double B Bad Blood. Join once again about the man to the right, the mixologist and professional wrestler, Mr. Chemical Julian. Right here. Down below is the man, the myth, the, myth. the international consultant, the legendary Sonny. Mm. Sonny, welcome to the Round Table Pros and Podcast. We are Thank- so happy to have you. Thank you so much. I hope you all speak Japanese because, you know, a lot of time when you, when you when you ask me a funky question, I know speak English. Google Translate. <laughs> <laughs> Google Translate up in this piece. <laughs> <laughs> so, so how have you been, man? It's been a while since I've talked to you. Yeah, no, you've been good. You know, I'm down here uh, uh, on my vacation home down here in Dallas right now because I, oh. I, I have to get away from that cold weather up north. You oh, know. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, so that's, that's um, you know, I'll just go back for Christmas just so I can see the snow and and probably so hit back. See the yeah. snow. Who yeah. wants to see the snow? I don't want to see the snow. I don't want it to come hit me at all. Hey man, some people want a white Christmas, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Nothing. Not, not nothing racist about that. Gonna, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Two black dudes talking about white Christmas, right? <laughs> <laughs> so so let's let's get into the nitty gritty, man. Let's talk about it. I mean, you had a historic career, man. You. You brought, you brought the best of the best WCW. I'm talking about the J Crown champion, man. Like Ultimo Dragon. Like I got belts. Belt collector. I, I'm the new belt collector. I got belts. I got like five championships in that trophy case right now. But that ain't shit compared to what Ultimo Dragon had. For real. Um, you know, you brought Tenza. You brought Otani. You brought you know, it's, man, Jushin Liger. I mean, Chono. Yeah. My favorite, Masahiro Chono. Yeah. Masa Saito. Like. That was back when I was like in love. That's what made me want to become a professional wrestler. I mean, watching Dragon defeat Danny Malenko for the Cruiserweight Championship to add it to the J Crown, you know, you were there. And what people don't know, well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna tell you a secret about Sonny Ono. Not many people may remember Sonny Ono is the originator, not the duplicator. He's the man who created the selfie. Well, no. Yeah. Let me let me let me, cor- let me correct you on that. Let me correct you. I didn't create it. You know, first guy who probably, you know, got a hold of a camera probably did a selfie. You know, um, but but I, I I I am the innovator. That's right. You know what I mean? Because I was the first person on weekly basis. You know, or, or multi weekly basis. Every time we came on. You know, I was I was doing a little Fuji camera and doing a selfie. We didn't call it selfie back then because not everybody had a cameras. But yeah, uh, you know, uh, like I said, the, the most. yeah, you know, and that 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 kind of stuck. And and you know, of course, he became a selfie later on. And you know, every, everybody who who got a smartphone had a camera in their hand, so they said, hey, you know, they started doing to, selfies. I'm about to do something real cool right now. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen. See how Sonny Ono is a man who. Who you know will come to the ring doing selfies, right? Like he did that shit all the time, ladies and gentlemen. You don't know. Like I was watching a video the other night, and I'm like, "See, he had a fucking selfie. <laughs> He's doing a selfie." So what I'm gonna do, and I know Julian's gonna be excited about this. You gotta do a screenshot. Here we go. I'm gonna do a selfie. Yep. Oh, wait, man. I'm not, how am I gonna do a selfie? I'm not even in the selfie. Hold on. Yeah, yeah you gotta be in there. You gotta be in there. Live on the podcast, we over here shooting selfies with Sonny Ono, ladies and gentlemen. So, Julian, oh you man, so, so excited when I told I, you I, I, I am, I really am. So, you know <laughs> what? Uh, first question of the night Where are the glasses? <laughs> you got you've got to have them in a case. I mean, oh. they've got to be on the, on the shelf. I mean, it, it's it, they're, they're gonna end up in somebody's wrestling museum. I mean, those are just your trademark shades. Yeah, you know, it's really funny. I actually I was gonna break it open. I, I like I said, I'm 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 not in my normal home, so but I, I did I did bring a pair with me down here. Um this guy. yeah, so you know <laughs> but um uh, uh yeah, you know what's really Arnett, the company, mm-hmm. uh yep. they they actually supplied us with all the glasses for if you look at like uh a Steiner's doing the, back in WCW yeah. days. It kind of gave us, you know, say, hey, which 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 one do you want? So yeah, so you know, I I had I had series of them. I had uh, those yellow glasses. Then yep. then uh, uh, then I had uh, uh, the red tint. Yeah, 
and I, and I had one when I was wearing a a, a, a purple suit. You know, when we were doing the, the uh, I was, I was, I wanted to be, you know, I used to work for Prince as, as, oh, really? As, yeah. Wow. I was one of the security guys. Yeah. Oh, shit. Back in Purple, <laughs> Purple Rain Tour. Yeah. Cause that hey. was my, that was back in my martial art days. Best and, man of weight in the world, baby. Yeah. I, yeah. Well, see, you know, he's, like, doing, he's doing his homework over here. So look yeah, at Julian's yeah. doing his homework. He, the man is a legend. I mean, I mean, what can you say? So, I mean, you know, you, I mean, you have, you have been in, you were part of MMA before it was being called MMA. Correct. I mean, I mean, you were doing martial arts. I mean, you were winning championships. You were, you were doing movies. You were in entertainment. Um, I mean, ju just doing it all. And then, you know, you, I, I guess you met Eric Bischoff back in the late seventies. Yeah. And then, you know, things just kind of came together and then here you are in the mid nineties, you know, um, doing WCW um, part of one of my first uh, exposures to Japanese wrestling um, was when great Muda came and was wrestling sting. And this was back when they were right. doing Saturday nights or the Saturday we morning about right. the other day, the NWA oh, yeah. TV title game. Yeah. And right. so when, when you came to WCW in the nineties and brought Muda out, oh man, I was just like, Oh my God! It's the Great Muda. Like I, just, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was like, "Oh, you know, something's gonna happen tonight," and it was it was just so special, man. It was it was fantastic. You know, I mean, it's really interesting that I was blessed to because uh, you know WWE didn't really or WWF at the time didn't really, you know, they they, they were they weren't different. They were doing their own thing. They were doing bigger than life, you know, characters, you know. Um, um, where we went when the nitro came around, we had an opportunity to to showcase more than more than what American audience are used to. You know, we did everybody. Of course, we brought the Japanese in, and when WCW versus New Japan, um, we did that. That was kind of my first time I was on introducing all those great Japanese and of course uh, the New Japan guys. You know, the Kanemoto, Otani. You know, Otani now is the president of Zero One. Yeah. Uh, promotion up over there and Kanemoto still wrestles of course you know Muda still wrestles um yeah. Tenzan still wrestles you know and uh Masa Saito passed away a couple of years ago yeah. um I still I stay in touch with his, his late wife Michi um talk to her on a monthly basis um so you know the relationship that I got to create you know we we it continues on and 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 uh uh you will be the since you worked in New Japan, Dojo. You understand doing business in Japan is not like, hey, how are we gonna get this done? How much is Whoa. it? My product <laughs> is better, or oh, I'm better. I can better. You know, you. It's not that. It's all about relationships. You know, if you don't have a relationship, first of all, they'll be polite to you. They'll take you out to dinner and have a good time, but you're not getting any business done. It's almost give you a false sense of man. They took me out and we had a good time and I think we're going to do all right here, you know, and, and chances are that you, you know, you're never going to get to, to the first base, you know? Um, and that, that's, that's a lot of the mistake that the American wrestlers and American business as in general makes a mistake doing business. And that's why I'm, I'm the consultant. You know, I, I kind of gives them heads up, you know, uh, uh, work how to work, how to work into their system, you know, um, it's it's intricate because then Japanese will never tell you no. Ooh, Am I right on that? They'll never that's tell true. you no because they're polite, so they don't want they don't want you to be disappointed. It's like us Canadians, you know. <laughs> you know, uh, but uh, what's what's interesting about it is that you know you think you think you're getting somewhere, but you're not. You know, you're never gonna be able to. Uh, you know, Toyota is never going to buy a uh, uh, GM headlights. True. <laughs> True statement. You know, you know, they could be cheaper, better, whatever. It ain't going to happen because they have a relationship as Nippon Dentsu have a relationship with Toyota. Yeah. You know, and it's like back in the feudal days, they marry into each other's. You know, I mean, they're probably related somehow. It, it, it That's how intricate the thing gets. So, uh, those are the things that you know I, I kind of give give the Japanese company a heads up, and that's what I did for Eric Bischoff, 
and, and WCW as well. But like uh, getting back to your original question, I was fortunate. I got to, I got to manage, you know, the great, like I said, Gray Muda, Masa Saito, you know, uh, Jushin Thunder Liger, yeah. you know, some of the iconic Japanese wrestler known in the United States, Bonacano, you know, Akira Hokuto. Oh yeah, as a matter of fact, didn't um, I was going to ask you about this before we talked about this the last time. Um, <clears throat> I think wasn't Hokuto the one that that uh, retired Medusa? Yeah, correct. So, it was so like a career it was, versus title, I think, wasn't it? Right. Well, this is the, basically how he was supposed to go. Um, it, is is the Medusa loses the title match? And WCW, Medusa was scheduled to go back to Japan and win the WCW title back. I mean, that was an idea. She was be the first American to win the title back in America, you know, yeah. bring the WCW title back. But, you know, uh, thing didn't work out, scheduling and all that stuff, and he got delayed, and, and, and uh, that never happened. Matter of fact, two years ago, Fuji Television, which is one of the big network in Japan, uh, Follow me for two weeks around various event WrestleCade, and and actually um, I did I flew they flew me to Tokyo to do a show, um, surprising uh, um, Akira Hokuto because she's a big personality television personality. People oh, yeah. don't even know her that she was even a pro wrestler. Um, that's yeah. how famous she is as a TV personality, and okay. I surprised her on the show. And they show some of the clips and 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 people in the audience and and uh, some of the some of the guests that was on the show didn't believe that was the uh, same person because you know she was pretty vicious back in the days, and she's all nice and sweet. <laughs> yeah, well, she has a very she has a big following and cooking show on YouTube and all that. Yeah, you can follow, oh, you can bro, yeah, uh, but you know of course she's married to Kensuke Sasaki, mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, the Power Warrior, one half of a Power Warrior. Um, um, uh, and, and what's really interesting was that she still has a belt, WCW woman belt, and she didn't know what to do with it. And that was the that was actually that was actually the premise of the show. What should I do with this belt that I have? You know, I, I'm no longer WCW is no longer. I'm no longer defending the title or you know an active pro wrestler. So the interview Eric Bischoff and, and you know and I surprised her on the show. Uh, and, and on a Fuji television live show over there. And, and um, you know, she still has a belt. Man. <laughs> wow. I mean, hey, it's her property, right? I mean, think about it. It's hers. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah. let me ask you this. Yeah. Lately, Eric Bischoff has been in the news. Yeah, he has been. He's There has been some issues. Well, okay, let me ask you a couple other things first before sure. I, I, I go through that. We mentioned the Steiners. Um, what is your take? Okay, did what is your take on NXT Takeover? Or no, I shouldn't say Takeover. NXT War Games. War Games with Braun Breaker, otherwise known as Bronson Steiner. Mm. What are your thoughts on the whole WWE? And I mean, like, what, what are your thoughts on the WWE Steiner issue? Like, do you think that there there's a heat there or what? Well, I'm I you know from what I understand there is and. And you know, honestly, whether directly it was, it was a director or indirectly, it, you know, I, I had opportunity to go there. Um, I, um, um, it never materialized, but you know, uh, Johnny Ace did reach out to me back. You know, right after <laughs> Johnny WCW. Ace. Um, Johnny it, Ace. Um, but you know, if you look at, if you take a step back and look at all the WCW guys that went over there, not prior to, but after when WCW was bought out by WWE, including Eric Bischoff, you know, DDP, Nick Patrick, the referee, you know, he told me some stories, you know, aside from Booker T, who also paid some dues over there before he got right. a, a push and, 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 He's probably the only one really got something out of it or somewhat a push after 
WCW was bought out. Correct. And, you know, I don't know if it was intentional or otherwise. You know, well, you look know, at, looking at from outside in, they didn't treat those guys very well. Uh-uh. There's, there's, this, there's this very big, I'm not going to say perception because perception is reality and it's the reality of what we see. But there's this very big uh, presentation, if you will, that um, if it's not Vince's creation, then it doesn't it, exist. It's, it's not going to go to the top. Like if he made it with his own two hands, yeah. then great. And it's going to go to the top and, you know, his, his idea and, and it's, it's, it's going all the way to the moon. But if it's something great that came in, uh, it'll get the light of day and they'll put some other people over. I mean, quite honestly, I think aside from, like we said, Booker T and the Goldberg, um, those are like some of the very few guys who actually got decent long-term treatment from WWE. Yeah, Goldberg is just smart. He, he, he negotiated some good stuff. You know, I yeah. talked to Bill. Um, he, he actually bought a place here in, in Texas. And, and uh, matter of fact, when I moved down here uh, about two weeks ago, I, I chat with him a little bit. And, and you know, build, build smart business. He's got a good representation and he's very smart. Um, yeah, I think he's a shitty worker, but that's just me. <laughs> well, you know, and you got to understand, he came at the right time. He did. And, you know, and, and everybody put him over him, you know. They did. That, that you know, the, like you said, perception is reality, and he was that. He was, he was you know, quasi-MMA kind of guy that, that came in with that persona, with the way he looked, and, and you know, he, he killed everybody. So yeah. in your opinion, I mean, just just us shooting right here, like yeah. us being us being boys. Absolutely. On a scale of one to ten, ten being amazing, one being greener than goose shit. What do you think his What do you think his his actual wrestling ability is? Well, you know, they kind of stuck him in before he was seasoned, right? He was this great, potentially one of the best stake they could be. Yeah. And, but they stuck him in, you know, right off, right off. The, you know, they didn't age him at all. They just True. stuck him in there. And reason why his match was well, as short as it was, was, was was that reason? He was a former <laughs> football player. We knew he could tackle. Yeah. Uh, that spear. That's you what know? he's still doing. Twenty some odd yeah. years later. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, God bless him. You know, you, 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 you know, if if he if and and and. He got that marquee, you know. He's he's the Gucci. Gucci hadn't changed the Gucci bag for, you know, thirty five years. People yeah. still paid crazy money for that stuff. That's right. That's <laughs> crazy. You know. So it is what it is. You know. I mean, he's a smart business guy. You know. He's he's not hurt. He's healthy. He looks good. You know. Hmm. Um. I don't think he's gonna have a hip replacement or or knee replacement anytime soon. You know. Thank God. Man, you know, I mean, guys our age are getting that, getting up there in uh, situations. <laughs> so, Julian, I know you got one more question you want to ask. One more question. So, um, how is Ernest the Cat Miller doing these days? Ernest is still active in martial arts. Um, him and I, uh, we shot some pilots. You know, he and he he been on MacGyver, a television show. He's a real good friend. He's got oh, a yeah. real good friend over CBS. Um, we pitched a show to, uh, 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 Paramount network, the, the streaming service, okay. um, martial arts show, nothing to do with wrestling. Oh, yeah, we talked about that before. Yeah. So, uh, th- th- they're still working on that project as well. And, and, uh, uh, you know, and, and we talk two, three times a week. Um, I was with them. I actually promoted them to fifth degree black belt in Miami, uh, three weeks ago, we were in Miami at the International Karate Tournament, nice. and yeah. and and uh, um, you know, he's he's still active as as uh, wants to be. I mean, I, I think he'd have opportunity to, to go work uh, at other companies, a television company, wrestling television company. Mm-hmm. But you know, we discussed it, and and I think he's you know, if a right. You know, he's a good friend with Bill Goldberg too. So, you know, right, right, right 
project comes along and, and with the right term for him to go back, I think I think he will. But you know, as of right now, I, I you know, you know, nobody wants to look. If he shows up, he's going to get a pop wherever he shows up. That's correct. true. He don't get but a pop it, for me, it, damn well. <laughs> but but it's got to you know, it's got to mean something, right? Hey man, I, I sure popped when he was in uh when he was in the wrestler with uh with uh, Mickey Rourke. Ayatollah. Yeah, that's yeah that's the right. Ayatollah. I was like, wait a minute, that's <laughs> that was a WCW yeah. movie. Let's just call oh, it what it is. Yeah. Speaking well, of that, yeah. let me ask you this. Yeah. WWE versus AEW. What are your thoughts? Well, you know, they're both on television. Um you know, of course, WWE is on network as well. So it's a little bit different, you know. Um, um, but um, listen, competition is always good. Good for the fans. Good for the worker. Certainly good for the worker. And and I think it's good for the business because, you know, listen, if you McDonald's and there was no Burger King and no Arby's, and no Wendy's. You'd just be McDonald's. There'd be no... Nothing yeah. else. Just yeah, I don't. Stuff. I don't think you're gonna. I. I don't think you're gonna get any McRib anytime soon. Exactly. You know they're not gonna try to do things to create more business because hey, you're the king, Correct. right? So you. You know, I. I think yeah. competition's good, and not only that. Let me. Let me go back twenty. You know, twenty three, twenty five years. You know, the best thing that happened when WCW became, uh, uh when Nitro started, and when, mm-hmm. when, you know. Eric podcast of you know, we beat him for 83 weeks. Um, it's the best time for wrestling, right? The product yeah, yeah, yeah. wise, as well as, as well as product was great. Cause the fan got to see what we were talking about earlier, the new Japan guys, the Japanese girls, you know, we were doing what girls are doing now. 20 years ago. You know, the, the, our girls weren't eye candies. The, you know, those girls from Japan were coming out and crap, beating the crap out of any, everybody. Yes, they were. I mean, what they did with each other was, I'm going to tell you something real quick. Uh, uh, Cutie Suzuki and Ozaki wrestle uh, Bonacano and Akira Hokuto. I think he opened the show at Nitro, I think. Mm-hmm. And we go to the, we come back from the, the ring and go in the back wrestlers kevin sullivan the bookers they all were going like oh my god because you know they were doing double stomp off the top rope yeah you yeah. know and they were stomping at each other's breast i mean you know i'm going like i'm not you know i can't believe the stuff they're doing right they're so stiff and the guys couldn't believe it. the boys couldn't believe it and and they did literally got standing ovation from the people in the back and Kevin Sullivan says to me, oh, my God, how long are these girls here for? We're going to put them on TV every chance they get. (laughs) Great. We go to our next town, and we're doing some – I can't remember. It was was another TV show. And all of a sudden, they're not – not. Kevin says to me, say, hey, Sonny, let me me talk to you. <laughs> I said, yeah, okay. You know, I said, okay, but well, you know, when, when we're gonna put the girls on? What hour? Uh, we can't put the girls on. I said, why is that? He said, well, I think they they make our boys look too bad. <laughs> <laughs> said, you gotta be kidding me. But you know, th- so those kind of things actually happen. And and uh, uh, but getting back to where I was at, you know, when you have a two place to go, when you have, you know. Two big company looking to hire you. You know, when there's a competition, it was it was the best time. There was guarantee money for the boys for the first time and, and, and made w, WWE match WCW offers or you know right. uh, uh, same format of pay because you know they used to get a piece of the action. All yeah. of a sudden, you know, you can't go to a bank and say, Well, I think I'm gonna make this much because uh, you know. I'm like number five on the tolling pole at the pay-per-view. You know, I'm scheduled. Bank ain't going to buy that. But if you go to a bank and says, here's my contract, you know, this this is my, and I have a guarantee paid for this much. Guess what? They're going to loan you money for the house. Correct. 
So that was a, one of the best time for the talent, I believe. And 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 I know that to be a fact. Personally, I, I believe that to be a fact because you know when WWE bought WCW, a lot of those guys with the you know uh, Perry Saturn and 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 Dean Malenko and those guys told me the story and they said they called you in and said, hey, we're gonna have to cut your pay a little bit. What are they gonna say? That's how Perry left WWE. Yeah, and I got him a job with New Japan. So you know, he, I got him a job. I think it was it was pretty good money, but he only had to work guaranteed for ten weeks. But he would have made ten weeks over there, made pretty significant amount of money. Yeah. Um, and he can still work independent. Yeah. You know, instead of working fifty two weeks a year. Yeah, that's crazy. You know, so, you know. Uh, I, I know what you know. People would talk about. I mean, Eric is a dear friend of mine, and I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll say that. But you know, he he created an opportunity for amazing amount of wrestlers. Forget about the product he he you know he produced. Um, but I think it was you know because of his color luck having that opportunity but you know he he created opportunity for many wrestler uh, to buy a house you yeah. know to have some kind of guarantee um I, I i you know yeah i don't think he get enough credit for it actually i mean i think you know he's doing a lot now um he's got a lot of heat between him and um him and tony khan um <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's the heat though I, I I honestly like it, it's been talked about as being he, but quite honestly, I think he just said something, and it was misconstrued. But Eric is a straight shooter. He, he has that's it, that's exactly. He just said it right there. <laughs> Absolutely. He you know he's not gonna pull punches if somebody asks him a question. And and, and he, you know he's got nothing to lose. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, you know, he's he, he's he's, and he's not saying it to be provocative so he can sell his eighty three week you know podcast. Correct. You no, know, this is how he feels, and you know, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. It, yeah. You know, he he he. You know, he's like a Tampa Bay hiring Brady, right? Hey, the guy done it so many <laughs> times. <laughs> he had to bring up Tampa Bay. I'm a Green you Bay know. Packer fan. I fucking hate Tampa Bay, but. <laughs> <laughs> and I hate Brady. Just saying that right now. Those are my comments. My comments, as long as they do not reflect those of the Round Table Pros and Podcast or BodySlam.net. I don't care. <laughs> Fuck Tom Brady. Um, so with that being said, um, there's a project you're working on. But I want to ask you before we get to that project, what are your thoughts on Rick Steiner's kid? No, I'm what what happened? What what are your thoughts on him? Like, I mean the, the whole Braun Breaker thing, oh. and the fact that last night's pay per view, um, he had on the boots that said Steiner. He on had them. on the boots that said on um, that said "Bite Me" Bite on me. one side and Steiner on the other, but the WWE refuses to acknowledge that he's a Steiner. Yet he wears a singlet. He barks like his dad. <laughs> he comes up to the ring with a siren like his uncle. You know, he hit a Frankensteiner and a bunch of Steiner lines last night, and I just. I, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't well, I, fans right now. Yeah, I don't. You know, I don't know what what the, what the. You know, are they trying to get a rub off his dad and his uncle, or they're trying to like not like not agree to him being it? Like like they're they're right. trying to pretend like he's not a Steiner by referencing well, every Steiner well, thing Steiner. that he can do. Yeah, maybe WWE don't want to pay the Steiner for licensing or something. I don't know. Who knows? You know, do you I, think there's I, heat with the WWE and the Steiners. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I'm, 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 you know, knowing those guys, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure that they <laughs> rub a few people wrong way somewhere. <laughs> I'm sure of that. Oh man. Um, all right. So there's a program there, there's, there's, you know, you, you sent me a video the other day or yesterday actually. Um, and I watched it. I was really intrigued by it. A lot of people would love to watch this video. So I'm going to put it out there, but sure, tell us yeah. about this right here. You gonna play it? Is that? Is oh, that I'm, I'm, not, I'm not gonna play the video. I can't play the video oh, okay. here. Okay. What I'm saying. Tell, tell us about the pro the project. Tell us about. Yeah. So 2018, 
uh, we did a tryout. Well, actually, we went. I got a call from um, uh, Russell One President Kaz Hayashi. If you guys remember Kaz Hayashi yeah, from yeah, WCW? Yeah. yeah. So he says, "Hey, you know, we're looking for some American talent to work in our company." I said, "Okay." I said, "So I said to him, I said, why don't we do? Why don't we chose somebody?" He says, "Sunny Sun, I'm going to leave it up to you to chose someone." So I went to about maybe 10, 12 different promising shows, promotions, and uh, uh, um, we chose a guy out of Booker T, a reality of wrestling, mm -hmm. and and uh, we sent him over there. Um, he spent about I think six weeks there training at at, at the dojo, and uh, Rex. I'm trying to think his last name. Um, uh, think of him in a minute. In a minute, um, he he went over there and trained over there because you know he wanted to train over there and learn their way. And and um, so when he got back to work with Booker T's Reality of Wrestling um, down in Houston, of course, and and uh, um, he said he was such a great experience, learned so much. Um, so, so next year, um, in 2019, we did a trial among six different locations and we chose two people out of every dojo and gave them scholarship to go with, go to Japan and live in a dojo, experience the dojo, you know, eating chankonabe, as you, as you know, in New Japan dojo. <laughs> Um, because dojo system is a lot like a, uh, it, it's based out of sumo dojo, mm -hmm. you know, um, senior, junior, uh, you know, young guy carry their bags and does all that stuff. And, 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 and not only get to train there, but you get to live the system. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a dormitory system. It was a very interesting, um, something I'd never experienced in my entire life. Right. You know, it, it, it was it was a lesson. <laughs> but, it, but it was in it was in LA though, right? You were in LA. Yeah, and then we went over to um we went over we you, went you, over to um to, New Japan uh, Dojo yeah. in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you know, uh, it it's a great experience, and if you're a pro wrestler, and especially you know up and coming guys, you want to experience that. You want you want to have that under your belt that you worked over there, and you know worked in their system. Um. I think he goes a long way on your resume. You know, yeah. if you look at some of the great wrestlers that are out there now, you know, um, I think they're, they all worked over there. Um, some of them, you know, longer than others. Um, some are still uh, working over there. Right. Absolutely. You know, and I, I, if he wasn't for this COVID, there'd be a lot more thing going on. But anyway, yeah. what we did was we took a guy over there. They got to work. Uh, they were so impressed with some of the people that we picked out because the, cause the actually Kaz Hayashi and I picked these guys, about 12 guys. I think 13 of them ended up going over there and lived in their do dojo, trained, did their dark matches, uh, actually got to work at work in Kolok and Hall, um, which is the mecca of Japanese wrestling. That's like the Madison Square Garden of Japanese wrestling. Right, yeah. correct. Yeah. If you can say, hey, I worked there, you know, it, that 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 that's a good resume to have. I say. Sure is. And and uh, uh, they got asked to come back. A lot of the guys, and of course, of course, uh, uh, COVID hit, and you know, um, some of the guys didn't get to go back. But you know, the invitation is still out there, and they'll go back soon as soon as uh, they get everything under control. But we're actually doing another one because you've been on hold last couple of years. But uh, we're planning on doing another one actually. Uh, monthly pro rest. Uh, uh, it's a magazine. It's a Japanese, uh, actually, wrestling about Japanese wrestling. It's English. You can look it up. It's P U R O S E, I think, pro rest O U. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, they're actually coming out with a special edition about our tryouts. Uh, okay. it's, it'll probably be out somewhere around March, I think. And and um, Kenny Omega is is uh, did a 
uh, uh, in-depth interview because, you know, here's a guy who were kind of shunned, didn't really make it till he went to Japan and reinvented himself Correct. with DDT Pro, which are the people I work with, uh, Mr. President Takagi. And of course, you know, he raised his bar over there and end up going to New Japan and 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 headlining the Tokyo Dome show. Sure did. You know, so so we did because here's a guy who actually reinvented himself going to Japan, and he talks about how much that helped him where he is today. Um, and and so uh, that'll be part of the big part of the article, but we'll be talking about uh, when a magazine comes out. We'll be talking about. We'll probably have about a, a, a dozen locations that we'll do a tryout, and we will give out a scholarship, airfare, uh, uh, accommodation, and training in Japan for a week. Oh, wow. And, and wow. Uh, um, you know, uh, there'll be a fee to do the tryout. If you think you got what it takes. And it's, uh, uh, we'll choose these guys, and they'll, they'll be able to go with us. Um, and like last group, I accompany them, uh, you know, it's kind of help them out with, with their custom and, you know, the, making sure that, you know, they don't walk around with their shoes at people's house in Japan. Uh, and, 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 you know, <laughs> you know, it's funny you say that. Cause, um, I, I, ever since the, ever since living in the dojo, I, um, you take one, shoes I off. wear tennis shoes in the ring. Right. Um, right. For two, I walk in my house and I take my shoes off and it's my yeah. own damn house. Which makes sense, right? <laughs> <laughs> really when you think about it why it, it didn't make it? sense to me then but like years later like I, after going through the whole thing it taught me manners <laughs> so to speak what a, you know <laughs> one of the thing that going back to this covid thing you know the japanese don't have a problem wearing a mask you remember when you went to japan people were wearing a mask back then back right. then yeah that was well, like you know 20 why, years ago you, man <laughs> and you know why that is it's called first thing that you learn in japan is called mindful of others yes correct Okay, so I, I so in other words, if I if I have a little cough coming, I wear a mask. They do that in Japan because I don't want to give whatever I got to you. Somebody else. Yep. Sure. That concept is very difficult concept in the United States. You know what I mean? It's my it, right it to is. make everybody sick if I'm sick. You know, it's funny you say that too. I was in I was in a grocery store yesterday and um I realized that I walk in and like everyone's wearing a mask, and this lady walked in wiping her nose, blowing like blowing into a tissue, but no mask on. And I'm thinking to myself, I hope you don't have COVID. Like you ever heard just blowing your nose, nothing? coughing, and like you're not wearing a mask yeah. and you're in a freaking grocery store? Right. Like, come on, <laughs> you know? Yeah, you know, and and those things that you you know that's why when you went to the dojo those are the things great you know when you think of we're talking about the shoes wearing tennis shoes and stuff like that yeah because dojo or a ring is such a respected square yep you can't be wearing your just street shoes or you know the something you might wear in the street well hopefully you know? these young cats will learn that these days because and know. yeah <laughs> and, and it really makes sense right Mm -hmm. You have a carpet in your house or even a hard floor. Why would you track all that stuff in your house? Take right. your damn shoes exactly. off at the door. Exactly. You go to Japan. You go to a hotel room in Japan. And they give you a little slipper. Yep. Correct. You take your shoes off at, at the door and they get a little slipper. And they have another slipper when you go to a restaurant. Yep. There'll like be the a little, one, little, little slipper that you change slipper to when you go into the toilet. So you don't bring that stuff outside. Yeah, it you know it's like I said it's 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 a mindful of others, you know. Think about what you're doing to other people. Forget about yourself, you know. You, that's why people don't talk on a cell phone or speakerphone exactly. in Japan. They don't. You know, well, you, they tell you not to use is, your phone. Now you is. see a lot of people texting because it's quiet. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but I'm the same you know, way too. I text too much, man. I'm I'm ten thousand text messages in today already this this wow. month and it's only uh the 6th of january uh, december so yeah i don't that's, talk on the phone much that's because that's you have all them girlfriends on the side man you're trying to get me in trouble <laughs> look at this guy sonny always yeah. throwing somebody in his bus <laughs> you know all right well you, you need to share some of that with you know these are old folks and see and that's why your wife won't get mad at you for this trip you're taking 
kayfabe. Oh, <laughs> man. And with that being said, I, well, man, Sonny, on, thank I, you very much. I got one you good got question. One sure, oh. absolutely. So uh, with, with regard to the chosen ones and to the tryouts, is there anybody that you got your eye on or anybody that you would encourage to show up for a tryout? You know, I, I don't want to – I mean, I, I see a lot of promising talent. You know, I, I you know, I'll, I'll go to an independent show and I go, whoa, that guy can go, you know. Uh, but just because he can go, it doesn't mean we don't know what kind of personality the guy has. Yeah, sure, sure. You know, there was a guy named by Cyrus that that uh, we chose, a big guy. He does moonsault off the top rope. He's three hundred and some odd pounds. Man, um, um, uh, he's really promising. The new the Kaz Hayashi went whoa, but he was you know he wasn't. We could tell he's athletic. But he wasn't coordinated, you know. He has he wasn't polished at all, you know. It was like finding, you know, a shiny rock. Yeah. <laughs> you know, big shiny rock. Man, this guy could be somebody, and the guy looked like a Vader, you know. And he's, he's but what impressed us more than anything else is the attitude. He wanted to go. He wanted to learn. He wanted to have that opportunity. They loved him so much. They brought him back like a, a, a month later, and he worked. Like I said, he worked over there for like six weeks. That's good. First time yeah. in his life, he actually made money working in professional wrestling. Wow! Nice. And and you know, honestly, um, he got more out of that trip, and he's working all the time now, and in a lot of the independent show, despite the you know the COVID. Um, I think he worked uh, Russell Kay shows and, and some of those, you know, the bigger mm-hmm. shows. And, and uh, uh, you know, you don't know what you're going to find, but, you know, way you – because one of the things Kaz says in the ring, mind you, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm not a pro wrestler by any means, but he says to them, he said, listen, I'm not trying to tell you where you take a bump is wrong. Where you learn to is fine. But this is how we do it in Japan. And that's how he goes about it. He doesn't say, hey, you're doing it wrong. No, because no, the way you're doing it is fine as long as that's how you were taught. He's not contradicting your instructor. But this is how we do it. So when you come over to our place in Japan, you're going to be able to work and way we work. You know, the right. No different, than, no different than if you go to Mexico. You know, they, they work different. That's why a guy like Ultimate Dragon is so impressive. You know, that here's a man who lived in Mexico, works in Japan, worked in the United States, and worked in probably every 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 major organization. I was with him two weeks ago in, in Albany, New York. He hadn't been in the U.S. because of COVID. We did autograph signing with, of course, Ric Flair and, and Jeff Jarrett and, and, and ooh, uh, ooh, you know, everybody was there. We touched and, on that subject. And we, we we were signing autograph and man, the man cleaned up. He came with a trunk full of masks and they were all gone. I bet because he's that's a true legend. Let me ask you this though before I let you go: What are your yeah. thoughts on Ric Flair and the plane I, ride from hell? I love Rick. You know, I mean, I mean, listen, listen. He's not running for office. <laughs> <laughs> he, not. Not. <laughs> he might win you know, shit. Who but, knows? but the Rick Flair I mean I don't I wasn't on the plane so I don't know what happened then but yeah but I can you know I've been with Rick and, and, and many you know more than once at the club generous to a fault <laughs> even if he doesn't have money he's going to buy you a drink you know um, oh, wow. you know, he'll, he'll buy a drink for the whole bar you know even his credit cards getting rejected you know what I mean <laughs> I mean <laughs> You know, it it and and if he drank enough, you know, like like many times in a ring where he'd start, you know, doing a promo and his clothes start coming off. Yeah, I seen I seen that stuff happen for real, you know. And many of us has have who worked with him, but probably the best worker, bar none. Um, uh, here's a man who who I have utmost respect for, uh, very generous, probably generous to a fault. Um, you know, I seen him give away Rolexes, so he is a generous to a fault, Spe- especially one. to a good looking waitress, you know, but only oh. problem is a lot of time he don't remember, you know, I got, <laughs> I got called from Arn Anderson one time and Arn says, Hey, what did Rex Rolex go? 
because he's going nuts. He can't find it. I said, well, from what I understand, he gave it to a waitress last night. So, you know, I mean, <laughs> whether that was alcohol or that generous, who knows? But he, he, he is, he, you know, my experience with, with the man is, is the, you know, that he is the man, you know, hmm. uh, 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 very generous, you know, he's generous with me. Um, I have nothing but utmost respect for him. You know, why, what he did, what, you know, I, I, I can't comment on that because I wasn't there. But, you know, Ric Flair, you see on television is Ric Flair that, that uh, is a real person. I got you. All right. And with that being said, Sonny, thank you for joining us here. Oh, um, thank you. Thank it's you always so a pleasure much. to have you on. Um, it, ain't, it, ain't a, it ain't a Sonny Ono interview unless you uh, throw me under the bus at least once. So it's all good. <laughs> um, so, I mean, pl plug plug away, man. Let people know where they can reach you. On yeah, Facebook. well, you know what? Since you have that uh, the video that you guys can, uh, uh, people can go look at, that is a trip from 2019. Uh, who we went to train to give you a little glimpse of what we did, what we got to do, uh, what the guy experienced, and feel free to reach out to the any of the talent that went with us. Um, if you recognize them or whatever, uh, um, you know, reach out to them and ask them their experience. Um, you know, uh, and, and they all can't wait to go back. Um, some of those guys took chance on themselves to go. Uh, I think they got rewarded really well. I'll tell you, um, some of the, a few of the guys, you know, they were thinking about hanging it up, you know, and after this trip, you kind of, you know, dis despite the COVID, uh, you know, reju rejuvenated their, you know, their, their dream. They desire, yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, they're back at it and they're doing really well, despite, despite the, you know, the, the condition of, uh, um, uh, international travel. But as soon as that's over and, and, you know, just like anything else, when you get old as I am, you understand it's always this and that, right? It's, yep. you know, hang on to your cash, brother, because there's going to be some great real estate deal coming pretty soon. <laughs> 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 you know. Oh, man. All right, what are you saying, man? Thank you very much for joining us uh, once again. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug this information into the uh, – into the into the uh, YouTube channel, then we go and buy some diet. I'm gonna make sure everyone goes and watch that video. Yeah. And uh, when you when you're ready to come back on, when you got some some plans, man, let me know. I'll I'll give you the time, the space, the opportunity to, to come on here and um let the people yeah. know where you're gonna be. Absolutely. And and when the magazine comes out, I'll give you a shout For and sure. and uh, get your copy and and you guys can take a look and and uh, yeah, it's it's gonna be good stuff. You know, I would love to take a couple of brothers. To uh to Japan when we go. I'm 47, you know? man. I, I I can still go. Yeah. <laughs> you know. I um, I got a couple guys in mind that I think will actually work really well with what you're talking about. Okay. Um, one is the uh, BCW Worldwide Champion, just exciting. He's a young guy. He's dedicated his life to the you know being a professional wrestler. Um, he's actually went on. He went he went to train with Shibata at the dojo. Oh really? LA a while ago, yeah. So he's nice. he's got some dojo training, so he's well respectful of the ring. Right. Um, yeah, those are and, the those are the kind of guy we need. Yeah, so, there's a yeah. guy that's the uh, the OIWA um, international champion. He's in he's in Texas, as a matter of fact. Well, you he got my number. Remo. Give him my numbers, and you sure. know, and give him my email, and feel free to reach out to me. And and Sweet. and uh, um, you know, anybody out there who who who's interested, let me know. Um, you know, as soon as this 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 pandemic thing and travel thing is gets lifted. You know, we're gonna schedule some tryouts and. You know, good luck to y'all. And and if it, it, listen, broaden your horizon. Come exactly. to Japan with me. You know, I'm gonna take these two clowns right here with me <laughs> <laughs> because I'm not gonna be responsible for these two guys. Oh, well, see, he over here, he ain't gonna be responsible for our actions. <laughs> yeah, man, I seen I seen too many, too many, too many boys go over there and going like, yeah, what, man. what, yeah, what, public bath, what. You know. <laughs> but I will tell you this I will give you a heads up on it Japanese girls love brothers All right, man see you go look, so look, look. And, and with that being said we are going to wrap this up <laughs> I'll, 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 both of you guys are nice and single oh my god see that's how he, he going to get us no. in trouble <laughs> <laughs>
No, yeah, I, will, I will say it do. right now. I'm about getting cut tonight. <laughs> you, do, you do understand. Once you cross the national dateline, you are single. You understand that. You know wow. how that works. <laughs> and with that being said, thank you very much for joining us, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> on another exciting installment of the Roundtable Russell Podcast, special edition with Sonny Ono. Thank you, sir.